A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. This is Dr. Trupti, and here we are uh, to prepare for NTA UGC NET Paper 1 2022 batch. And today is our last lecture for Teaching Aptitude Crash Course MCQ series. Tomorrow onwards, we are going to start with new unit. That is tomorrow is 17th of May. So uh, you know that we are going with crash course series, uh, that is MCQ series. And every five days we have allotted for this particular series. Uh, at the same time, you are all aware that, you know, from tomorrow onwards, you know, we'll be having a new batch, new unit. Now, what do we have to offer for a global, that is on the platform of global online for paper one, what do we have to offer? That is daily live lectures, which are scheduled nowadays for twice, seven, that is morning, 7 a.m. We have lectures for students of Hindi. And at 9 p.m., we have lectures for uh, students with English language, that is completely in English. We also have a uh, a revision notes so this this can be in the form of revision notes on all the topics that is uh, pdf format last 10 year question papers with mcq test series or you can take mock test which is in the form of you know uh, more than 2500 plus questions for practice now as you know that uh, you can download all this with the help of global online app or you can also whatsapp us the fees for same is rupees 3000 but let me make you one thing very clear which is very very important it is a high alert for you all that there will be fee rise from 20th of may so now which we have at 3000 the paper for the fees for paper 1 will be 3500 now, how do we go uh, for this? So you can go at Google Play Store. You can type here as global online. You can get the icon which is shown to you. Once you download, you get this type of, you know, interface where you will be asked for a registered mobile numbers with the help of OTP. You can enter into the app and you can get this interface where you have an option of paper one. But as I said, paper one fees is showing as 3000 now. From 20th of May, the fees will be 3,500. Okay, just make a note of it. So in case if you want to avail the facility, you can make a decision and you can uh, uh, book the course. Then once you click on this paper one, you will enter into this type of uh, interface that is content. Once you click on the content, you will get all the folder units, unit wise. So like, for example, if you click on any folder, it will be having theory lectures, MCQ lectures, notes, mock test and evaluation test. Uh, today's evaluation test is TA013. Okay, so in this evaluation, evaluation test of teaching aptitude, you can see the test as TA013. Okay, now. So this is all about what this is all about paper one paper two also notes and mcqs we have for the subjects which are visible on the screen all the subjects instead of eye reading you can have a quick look at the subject and fees for same is rupees 1000 now in case if you want to buy this course after 20th of may here also there is a fee hike that is it will be 1500 so you can we have just updated you with the fee highs which is uh, rise which is going to take place from 20th of may so you can please get into touch in case if you are having any requirement for the same okay so now let's start with our today's class which is um, a, a teaching aptitude where you have question five questions where we have total marks is 10 so each question carry two marks the syllabus which i keep on revising on daily basis we have subunit like teaching where we have concept objectives levels and characteristics we have learner characteristics which includes academic social emotional and cognitive characteristics factors affecting teaching related to teacher learner support material instruction facilities methods which are teacher centered versus learner centered including online versus offline Swayam, Swayam Prabha and MOVES, teaching support system where we have traditional, modern and ICT based evaluation system with the elements and types of evaluation and as well as a credit, sorry, choice based credit system and computer based testing and innovation. So in today's class, we are going to see this is this is a fifth lecture of our uh, teaching aptitude and we are going to quickly revise all those what we have done, uh, trying to capture it in all the 15 questions in the coming cycle. I mean to say uh, again for the next cycle, we will again have the new set of questions. So today, let us put more emphasis on the revision part like and let's go ahead. Okay, so yes, coming here to question number one, everyone. So the question number one is which teaching aids enhance the skills like reading, 
listening and pronunciation which teaching aids enhance the skills so whether it is audio lingual whether it is scientific teaching aids whether it is general knowledge teaching aids or whether it is theoretical based teaching aids which of the following teaching aids enhances or you can say increases the skills like reading listening and pronunciation so you have time till the time i have read the question time or uh, i mean is it twice you people can now this is a revision so i want everyone to be very quick with the answers and please note down your scores and keep at the end you have to definitely uh, ping me with the scores which will help me to understand which tough level of questions now i need to set for the next upcoming cycle okay so you have got enough time to answer so let's understand the right answer is yes we are talking about reading listening and pronunciation okay so your audio lingual teaching aids are the aids which will enhance this given skills so the right answer is option number 1 that is audio lingual teaching aids scientific teaching aids may you know may not result into this general knowledge or theoretical based it is these are the teaching aids but will they will not enhance the given skills so the enhance uh, the given skills will be announced only by audio visual teaching aids okay then the next option is we have done this lot amount of time and i feel now the students should be very perfect with this question think aloud procedure is what is it a part of a secondary source of data is it a technique to investigate the strategy uh, and performance of learner a strategy of testing learners aptitude or a necessary method in scientific research so you can also come down you know by elimination method to this provided you know what is think aloud procedure so what is the meaning of the procedure think aloud what does it indicates or what does it tells about okay yes i am waiting for answers i am giving equal opportunity to everyone to come to the answers but you have to as i said this is more of revision class so it has to be more faster so that you can know you can practice yourself with one minute one question that's how your idle practice should work out okay so yes think aloud procedure is nothing but a technique to investigate the self uh, that is learner strategy and performance now anyone who do, who do not know what is the meaning of think aloud procedure think aloud procedure is nothing but a type a technique you can say a instrument or tool you can say where we understand okay uh, on our own as a learner we understand you know what strategy and how should be our performance when we you know when we uh, when we initiate to do something so we when we think think aloud we will help to understand uh, or we will get a clarity on the strategy and performance uh, for our own self in order to you know uh, perform better or improve that is how you can see question number 3 now yes we know very well that this is a this is the levels which we have that is memory level understanding level and uh, analyzing level it's nothing but a reflective level also and creating level so which uh, set a you have and you have set b so you have to tell so you know what is memory level used for you even know what are the sequences of the level so you have to tell that which level works for what option number a as i read memory understanding analyzing creating uh, set b talks about you know identifying the examples generating new uh, ideas or information recalling information isolating information into parts so obviously some maybe you were confused but certain things like memory level and understanding your level you know so even if you work out with this you should be able to get the right answer okay so yes the right answer students i know this may be much faster but i'm just waiting for anyone who is new and who is taking time to read the question the right answer is yes of course option number d because memory talks about recalling understanding talks about identifying the examples of the given concept analyzing talks about isolating the information and creating talks about generating something new information or idea okay coming to question number 4 so it is a lengthy question i just request everyone to read it very properly and come to the answer from the list given below identify the instructional events which form the part of structure of a lesson plan so you have to identify the uh, events which form a structure of a lesson plan so list of instructional events are what gaining so what is basically the intention of a structure lesson plan is it gaining attention of students prior knowledge of students informing the learner of objectives stimulating to recall the prerequisite learning checking the availability of reading material 
or eliciting the desired responses okay so what do you do you think that you know is the uh, structure of the lesson plan should be or what exactly is the uh, lesson plan should you know include accordingly so i'm just waiting for everyone to answer now anyone in case if you are not knowing uh, you the, the meaning of you know what is eliciting the last option the desired responses you, you like you know uh, it is like um, to make to draw out uh, to make uh, you can say or uh, to come up with the desired responses so what exactly is the list instructional events elimination round will ha definitely help you to come up with the right option but still giving everyone an equal chance to that uh, so that they can come up with the right answer so we'll see which option is right option c so when we talk about lesson plan yes the first thing is that gaining the attention of students should be a part of your lesson plan then prior knowledge is not required you that that is you know like prior knowledge when you make a lesson plan you imagine that the things are known to the child for the first time but if while teaching or while interacting if you know that already know so you have to ensure that you know you apply it to the current present scenario so informing the learner about objectives which is very very important part of the lesson plan stimulating that is a recall of prerequisite learning uh, re resulting into an action and eliciting the desired responses it means you know coming up or drawing out a desired responses checking the availability of reading material that depends upon you if it is not available it should be a part of your lesson plan so based on that you do not prepare a lesson plan so lesson plan has this following events that is gaining attention prior knowledge then we have you know stimulating the uh, prerequisite learning and eliciting the desired responses okay now question number five uh, following are the list uh, activities which are listed performed by a teacher which activities are of formative evaluation so we know that we have formative evaluation summative evaluation norm uh, reference criterion reference even placement is there so which type of evaluation will come under uh, the nature of formative evaluation from the given giving a mastery test conducting a quiz evaluating students in grading system providing feedback while teaching encouraging students reflect more so see in this type of questions your concepts are really going to help you out so you know what is formative what is summative evaluation we have done so based on that can you tell me which of the given options are right when it comes to formative evaluation characteristics so let me wait for some time and uh, see how many of them are able to answer okay okay so let's see option number three but let's go one by one giving a mastery test definitely is not a formative evaluation evaluating students in the grading system is a summative type of evaluation providing feedback yes conducting quiz yes encouraging students reflect more yes so this is a test which is done you know on a regular basis either in the quiz form uh, immediate provide uh, feedback is provided and students are encouraging encourage whereas if i talk about summative evaluation which is a cumulative it means it is taken at the end in order to understand the uh, performance of a child in that specific semester or the academic year so that is conducted at the end and that is called as summative evaluation okay then next is now here they have given an example and with the example they have told to identify the level a teacher gives lot of positive and negative examples to support his or her presentations in the classroom this will be related to which type of level of teaching autonomous memory understanding or reflective now this all i have explained you very well again here i want 100 person answers to be you know uh, right why because this we have done ample amount of time in detail we have done for theory class also first cycle of mcq also so this should be very perfect A teacher is giving a lot of examples, a positive as well as negative examples. Here they have confused you a little bit. The meaning is that teacher give examples, so whether it is a positive example or negative example, and teacher 
uh, for the presentation in the classroom. Now, which type of level it is, you have to recognize that, okay? I sh and I'm very sure that 100% the students will be right because this answer is, uh, you know, taken earlier also and students have answered it very nicely. So, yes, it is the, it is which type of level? It is your understanding level because memory test is basically more of recalling part. Reflective is analysis part. It is only understanding level, which is, you know, which is related to more of examples uh, to support the presentation in classroom. And autonomous development is something which is done by the, you know, by the learner himself. It is initiated by the learner himself. Okay. Okay. Now, yes, let's go to Question number seven. So below are the listed some examples, some learners' characteristics. Identify those which help in effective teaching. Learners' characteristics. So they have given you the learners' characteristics. So what exactly, uh, you know, uh, is meant by uh, effective teaching with respect to this? So is this learners' respect for teacher, learners' mental ability, uh, learners' previous experience, learners' level of interest? learner's level of interpersonal relationship or learner's view about the society. So which of the given characteristics are related to effective teaching? Now see, the characteristics listed are all maybe right, but we are not interested in all. We just want to specify which of them are, you know, are related to what effective teaching. So you have to look at them and answer me accordingly. Yes, waiting for everyone so that you can. So remember, again, I'm saying characteristics are all right, but we are only interested to in understand which will result into effective teaching. Okay, yes. Elimination you can do. It will really help you out to come up with the right answer. And let's see how many of you have answered it correctly and how many of you have conf got it confused. So yes, so for, let's go one by one. Respect for teacher is not the one which is effective in teaching. See, it is, it is one of the values, but that doesn't mean that respect for teacher results into, you know, effective teaching. No. Learner's mental ability, yes. What type of grasping power, what type of potential it has. So it has a response. It has relation with effective teaching. Previous experience, yes. It will help to understand the things very well, to connect the things very well. In level, uh, sorry, learner's level of interest in study, yes. Learner's level of interpersonal relationship, definitely not because it is it is not the characteristic required for effective teaching. OK, learner's view about the society. Yes, because, you know, a lot of things are, ex, uh, you know, uh, accepted and accordingly worked out uh, by the student, depending upon the societal uh, characteristics. So, yes, it is also an important, you know, characteristic for effective teaching. So it talks about what it talks about mentality, mental ability, sorry. Learners' previous experience, learners' in level of interest, and the learners' view about the society. Okay, so this is the right answer. So almost on an average, fifty percent of answers we have done. You should be able to, you know, score well till now. Let's see what another fifty percent tells. From the list given below, uh, identify those teaching methods which have a great scope for dialogic discourses. Okay. The options are given below. That is lecture through audiovisual method. Okay. Let me first explain you all the options. And then in case if you have any doubt, I'll just uh, ensure that that is, also, uh, uh, this, uh, that is also properly explained to you. Okay. So team teaching, tutorials, problem solving method, chalk and talk method, group discussions. Now this is, this question also is taken uh, again and again by me. But never I have got 100% right answers for this. Here also students get confused a lot. So let's see. So what are the uh, uh, options which result into or which have a scope for a dialogic discourses? Yes. So anyone who do not knows dialogic discourses, it means, you know, a social relationship, you can tell, intellectual openness, you can tell, a creative thinking, you can tell. These are all the options or this comes in, you know, in the, 
dialogic discourse and if it is about te teaching so it is basically you know it involves ongoing talk between a teacher and student and not just teacher uh, presentation so it is like you know it is two way interactive you can say so let's see what are the options now based on this explanation if you are able to answer very well okay so yes so we have you know uh, tutorials where we have interaction where we have you know uh, one to one uh, con conversation with the teacher so that is tutorials then is problem solving methods and then comes your group discussion audio visual is one way team teaching also can be one way as well as your talk talk method is also one way so your dialogic discourse it means it, it has to be two way so the right option is option number 2 is it clear okay now which of the following is an example of maximum performance test in last class that is test number 4 there was a question on this but it was a completely different question but related to this okay that is class test is conducted for what reason similar to this only it was so it was basically standardized test so here which is the following is an example of maximum performance test personality projective personality aptitude or interest and attitude skills so what does is the right answer maximum performance test i have taken this earlier also as i said this is bit of revision class so you should know very well you know what is um, able to what will be the right answer actually okay okay let's see how many of you have answered rightly so uh, maximum performance test is nothing but an example of uh, aptitude test is an example of maximum performance test so if you can see maximum performance test sorry maximum performance test tells us what a person can do whether I, like for example achievement test aptitude test intelligence test it asks the test takers to put their efforts in solving problems that is the, the learners okay maximum performance test present problems that have to be solved by test takers the objective is to obtain the best possible or maximum level of performance from the test takers it is designed to assess the upper limits of examinee's knowledge and abilities so basically it tells about what the achievement it tells about the aptitude or it tells about the intelligence and that's what they have given one of the example so it is called as aptitude test instead of aptitude it could be achievement also or it could be intelligence also in the theory class i have done this very well you should be able to remember this properly okay next which of the following is an example or oh, sorry uh, the performance of a student is compared with another student it see perform that day also we did this type of question which was was completely the performance of one student is compared to another student now you should definitely not be wrong this concepts i have explained you since jan and you should really be perfect in this whether it is criterion reference whether it is diagnosis whether it is summative or whether it is norm reference one student's performance with another student and this again should be you know very well you will definitely not have summative or diagnostic but here in this two students gets confused so i have explained you very well what is criterion reference and what is norm reference still let me check how many of you can do right and how many of you are still making a mistake you have time to answer the questions yes okay let's see how many of you are right so that is called as norm see when we compare one with another it is norm but when we compare the student with you know certain benchmark it is called as criterion reference so the right answer is norm in test number 4 also we had same type of question but that was on based on criterion reference and today it is norm reference okay question number 11 following are the strategies uh, which are associated with direct teaching so what will be uh, associated with direct teaching whether it is examples and explanation promoting inquiry focusing on concepts giving review and recapitulation that is summarize uh, to summarize okay recapitulation and summarizing offering practice and feedback problem raising and problem solving so which of them are associated with direct teaching direct okay so providing examples and explanation promoting inquiry just remember the concept direct teaching focusing on concepts giving review and recapitulation offering practice and feedback or problem raising so yes the right answer is actually as i said this direct teaching is nothing but a deductive model so we have uh, 
actually in, in case if you're getting confused you can just keep direct teaching so direct teaching is providing examples and explanation uh, obviously giving review and summarization and offering practice and feedback promoting inquiry may not be instant focusing on concept again is not direct raising the problems and solving uh, problem raising and problem solving may not be initiated immediately it can come later on also so when we are talking here about what we are talking here about di direct uh, teaching which is also called as what which is also called as deductive model okay then from the list given below identify those questions which are called as process rather than content based now this also i have told you process based content in theory class see when i'm saying that no it's very obvious that i have taken uh, you know one one hour theory class almost uh, 11 10 to 11 theory classes i have taken so students should you know please refer to that uh, topics then only it will be easier for you to you know understand this concepts otherwise it will be become very difficult Okay, so yes, what is process based and what is content based? So if I talk about process based questions, I'll just give a small review again. Process based questions, it means those questions which are designed to test the mastery of the subject. Okay, mastery and the ability to analyze a particular subject or system. Whereas content based, if I take, it is designed for, you know, knowledge of facts and information. So if I talk about, if I give examples, now you'll be able to get that. In the theory class, I have told you what comes under process-based and what comes under content-based. And based on that, they have given this questions. So one which is, you know, which is uh, factual and informative and one which is, you know, which is uh, based on the description and explanation or a mastery. So with here, they are talking about which are process. So you have to tell me the process-based question. So I hope you've uh, understood with an explanation. What is process based question? Okay. Uh, if you if you know a content based question, even on elimination round, you can you know come to the right answer. So let's see. Uh, see if you if I see option number like for example, they have told us what they have told us to find out process based question. So process based question, you should know that conversion come under content divergent. So it comes under content. Option number one will not be there. So wherever you have option number one. Okay, here is an option number one. A divergent is process. Okay, then uh, facts based of so knowledge about, you know, knowledge about uh, information. I said the questions based on the knowledge or fact is again what it's a content based. So fact will not come. So option number three again will be cancelled out. Okay, content uh, concept based questions that will be a part of what process because it is testing the memory. So concept will come open end questions open end definitely mastery so it will come a close end comes under what it comes under your uh, content base so please remember process and content so under process what you have is that you have concept based okay you have divergent questions as well as you have open ended questions whereas in the process if i talk you have fact based questions okay you have convergent and you have close end questions. So hope this much also, if you write and keep, it will be easier for you to remember. Okay, we have taken this concept very well. Next, from the list of the effective teaching behavior, identify those who are key behaviors. So from the given below, which results into the key behavior, okay, whether it is direct, auditable, and oral delivery, encouraging students to elaborate, or it is, you know, warm and nurturing relationship, various mode varying mode of presentation or whether it is preventing misbehavior or organizing what is to come and summarizing what has gone before so what what of the following are you know key behaviors direct audible or oral delivery encouraging the students to elaborate warm and nurturing relationship varying mode of presentation preventing misbehavior uh, and organizing what is to come and summarizing what has gone so what you will call as key behavior uh, such questions sometimes may confuse you. You have to be very much alert for such question. That's the reason I said reading, you know, uh, is very, very important. So let's see. Yes, so it is direct and audible oral de delivery. 
then we have you know uh, varying modes of representation key behaviors please remember key behavior so encouraging the students nurture relationship it is it is good for bonding but that will not play a key behavior in the in the teaching okay and then we have as preventing misbehavior rest of the points are right but they they are very generic they do not play an important role in teaching effective teaching that you have to keep in mind okay now question number 14 which of the following statement explains the concept of inclusive teaching now this also we have done what is inclusive teaching but yes in case if you don't remember i will take it now also but still let me give those students who remember the concept in case okay let them let them give an attempt and let them uh, let me see how many of them are able to do it very well okay let me see yes i hope fine what is the what is the concept what what is the statement which tells about the concept of inclusive teaching okay okay so here teacher facilitated the learning of the gifted students no teacher facilitated the learning of weak students no teacher support the parents of the students who to make them learn no teacher makes the student of different background learn together in the same class inclusive it means it refers to the pedagogy that strives to serve the needs of all the students irrespective to their background to their identity and support their engagement with the subject material it means teacher does not differentiate between any student in the class for for teacher all the students plays an equal role okay or all the students are treated equally okay now let's come to last question of the day and it should be definitely right i feel it is one of the easy question but let's see how how you people are able to do to organize discussion method in teaching effectively which of the following conditions should be met to organize discussion method topic should be easy you can go with elimination round over here topic should be declared in advance topic of common interest availability of more than one teacher or language facility of the participants so which of the discussion uh, method can result into you know uh, can can be effectively uh, or take plays an effective role elimination round if you go it will be easier for you to you know uh, come up with yes so a uh, topic to be easy is not you know one of the so option number a if you see and uh, like for example topic of uh, sorry availability of more than one teacher is not at all right question declared in advance yes common interest and language facility so even if you do this this will definitely help to organize discussion in effective way okay so i just want everyone without fail to put your score so that we understand what level questions were though it was a revision question but still i doubt if any new students are there to the class students who have started you know preparing themselves with our channel so we'll come to know and accordingly we will see how the next level of you know preparation should be uh, now only for one small request this week we'll be having the sessions the recorded sessions for 9 pm only for this week and uh, tomorrow also we have a session on reading comprehension so don't forget to attend that M many of the students had requested for certain tricks and understanding which i'll be uh, definitely coming up with tomorrow's class okay so thank you everyone and see you tomorrow with the next session that is reading comprehension keep learning keep your uh, keep yourself updated and ensure that every moment you are practicing for your upcoming examination of your net okay thank you everyone